slightly off topic, but same topic as that. Um, I did read somewhere that Google, that the, the Google Assistant will be less mean to you if you actually use, like, please and thank you and stuff. So I started doing that because she and I get into fights a lot. <laughs> Is it because of your accent, though? I don't know. She just denies me. <laughs> but she listens to my husband, so. Wow. It's yeah, she's you're a bit a woman. of a bitch. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh it's, it's sexist. <laughs>and welcome to anime club after dark the podcast that delves into all things anime manga and otaku culture related i'm your host alex but you can call me senpai and joining me tonight we have our art simp chinoda i love me some good art yes you do. <laughs> and speaking of art we have uh the artist finn's mama is, is here um our mascot's mama uh vix Hello. Rule 34 of the internet herself has joined <laughs> us <laughs> with her nice, uh, I guess, wintry background. I don't know what you would call that. It's, it's, it's kind of bubbles. <laughs> Bub oh, it's bubbles. I thought it was like yeah. snowflakes. Uh, it looks nice. It looks nice. Thanks. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining us, Vix, on this, uh, mm. this episode of the podcast, because we are talking about something, um, as you might uh, might guess, uh, since we have both an artist and an art simp here in Chinoda, um, we're going to be talking about something related to art. Um, it's a topic that has been a bit of a, uh, shall we say, a hot button issue um, online over the last several months, and that is... Uh, AI or artificial intelligence generated artwork. Um, so much of a uh, hot button issue that a lot of people refuse to even think of it as art. <laughs> um, but um, so I want to I want to put out like right uh, up front here that like we're together here just to talk about it. We're not like trying to change anyone's opinions um, tonight, um, especially the opinions of the people that are here on this podcast. Um, we're just kind of here to present what it is, what we think of it um, and where we see it going in the future, um, perhaps. Um and also, like, none of the stuff that, I, I don't want to speak for both of you, but none of the stuff that we're doing tonight is, should be considered a personal attack on anyone that's ever used this technology. <laughs> no. no, definitely not. Um, I do want I do want to say, though, myself, because I come from this in a non-artistic realm. I am not, like, I can't draw for shit. <laughs> I mean, I've shown Vix before my stick figures. <laughs> um... <laughs> I come from this uh, from a purely technical perspective. Like I have uh, an IT degree. I have a computer science degree and I'd be lying if I said that despite all the negativity and some of the negative aspects of um, AI art generation that I'm not personally fascinated by the technology itself and its potential. Um, I think I see a lot of potential in this type of technology besides just art. Um, I just think that art is one aspect that this um, this technology, uh, this neural network type technology is being used for currently. Um, and I think that despite some of the negativity, I, I find it very difficult to hate it entirely just because I see that there is potential in this technology. I don't know about the two of you in that regard. I don't hate its potential. I think that it can go really, really far. I think that like, especially in when you keep in mind some of the like the sci-fi kind of movies and shows and stuff then they would also have ai generated stuff and it, it could go that far if developed mm. enough but i think that right now in in society today it's it does create mm. a lot of fear for particularly artists anyway, I can speak from an artist point of view, it can create a lot of fear and that's where a lot of that negativity comes from. Yeah. Were you going to uh, say something to note? <laughs> yes. For me personally, um, um, on both sides of it, um, I do find this technology incredibly fascinating and amazing the fact that we managed to come this far uh, as a species as a technological uh society that we can have something that isn't living create something called art and at the same time i i do feel we have to use it responsibly we have to set limits we have to as a society itself 
uh, figure out what it should be able to do, what it can do, without pushing out the what came before, aka artists themselves. Yeah. Because otherwise, it, yeah. like if you just let technology do it, they're not going to come up with entirely new mediums, entirely uh, new things. They're just they're just recreating things that already exist and yeah there's only so many things so far we need that human element to keep on going with this and there needs to be limits yeah and that's something that a lot of people have like one of the big criticisms is that like can art can art even be created by something that isn't human like if it's created by a machine is it really art that's why i think a lot of artists particularly artists online who may take commissions uh may feel kind of really slighted by this uh technology and like they're thinking well you're taking away like the heart out of art <laughs> yeah no i uh, i agree i agree i've seen like just a just as a practice i did go onto a generator website and created a few pieces and i i like i like the results of them but at the same time another artist a human artist could have made that hmm it may have taken a little bit of time. It would have taken some money. But yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. Um, I do like how um, all the all the people who hate this are like, look at the hands, look at the hands. The AI can't do hands. And like, I'm thinking, <laughs> look, I'm look, thinking to myself, learning. I'm thinking to myself, every artist out there that can't draw hands is like, oh no, <laughs> they're gonna think my art is AI generated. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I remember when I was still learning art and whatnot. I'm still learning art, but I remember years and years ago I did a piece and the hand was about the size of the body and I was like, <laughs> oh no. I remember you, I was watching you on an art stream you were doing one time draw our mascot, Finn, and you really screwed up the proportions of the hands and you're like, <laughs> fuck this, and you just erased the entire thing. <laughs> yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah. Christ. <laughs> Uh, uh, but yeah, I, uh, that's a meme to create later. Artists looking at AI generated art, like, oh shit, it's just like me. <laughs> um, yeah, I do feel bad for some of the artists out there that get slighted because now they can't draw hands and they're going to get accused of being AI art generated. Stuff. I yeah, I did have that thought actually, looking at art, and so like, oh, you can clearly tell that it's AI art, and then there's there's me, the other part of my brain that's like. But artists can make mistakes too. Yeah. I mean, I think it, that's, I feel like a lot of it is nitpicking, but sometimes like I look at art that I, I know that people have made and I'm like, mm, that line could have been a little better. That line could have been a little thicker. Yeah. But that, that's what gives it its character. And that's kind of yeah, what exactly. makes someone's art style too. It's it's the the little like yeah. the unique mistakes for lack of yeah, a better yeah, word. Yeah. Um, but well, Cause art isn't meant to be flawless. No, it's not. Um, it, and that's, I think, part of what gives art its heart. It's the, it's the human flaws that, that you find in yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely understand in, in that aspect why a lot of artists do feel really down in the dumps because uh, of this technology. And let's let's not get it twisted. I There are platforms out there that do AI art generation that are straight up stealing other people's artwork to use to train their algorithms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which... DeviantArt was trying to do that, and they backflipped on that hard. Yeah, there was a oh, thing they did where um, they kind of, they kind of like in, in the middle of the night changed like their terms of service and made it so yeah. that you had to opt out. I think of yes, ba yes. basically said that if you had a, a DeviantArt account and you didn't opt out, because obviously by default you were opted in. Uh, yeah. If you didn't go in and manually opt out, it meant that they had the right to use your art or anyone to come in and use your art to train uh, neural networks for AI art generators. Yeah. Um, which, I really wonder what crazy. they were thinking with that. Like, oh, I know. Why did they think that would be a good idea? Yeah. Anytime, anytime any platform or any company changes their terms of service in the middle of the night, you should always scour through it because whatever they uh -huh. have added in the middle of the night is designed to fuck someone over. Yep. That's the only reason you would do a, a TOS change in the middle of the night while everyone is asleep. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty shitty. And I think, I, I, I again, I don't want to speak for both of you, but I think we all kind of condemned that kind of of behavior oh, with this technology. Absolutely. Because no, it's, that's incredibly scummy. It's 100% abuse of the technology. 
especially because you would have so many users, particularly okay, in DeviantArt's case as well, especially, you'd have so many users that are inactive on the site mm. but still have their art up are unable to reactivate their account because maybe they have passed or do not yeah. have access to it anymore. Uh, um, so they now cannot opt out of that, which means DeviantArt has access to all of their art that's already on there, regardless yeah. on their opinion. I, I have a very old DeviantArt page. Um, it's still there. I don't know how to log into it anymore because I have completely forgotten both the email and the password that I used for it. Um, yeah. And I, now I'm not an artist, like a traditional artist. I had my writing up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But there are obviously, um, uh, like, ChatGPT is, is a big one um, that does, like, AI-generated writing prompts. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously all of my writing can now be used for that because I can't log into the account. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but not that I matter. It's a bunch of fucking poetry and shit that I wrote while I was in high school. <laughs> It's oh, like 15 it must have been so cringe. It, a lot of it is. A lot of it is. Um, yeah, I, I get it. Like in that aspect, because one of the things I tried to do was try when I found out about it. I was like, well, I know I still have an account up there. And I just kind of like thought, you know, whatever, fuck it. it. It's up there. It's probably never going to get deleted. Whatever. I don't really care about this stuff because I wrote it so long ago. Speaking um, of what people made, what are your uh, what are uh, both of your thoughts on the copyright side of this? Mm. Well, obviously, if it's if it's a system that is going out and actively stealing uh, stealing um, other people's artwork simply for like training the neural networks, obviously that's an infringement of copyright. Um, yeah, I think they should get the permission of the creator to do that. Now, if if the artists have no issue with it, then then fine, whatever. It, it's that's up to them. Um, and if the artists are voluntarily putting their artwork into um, neural networks for AI image generation, then, I mean, I think that's a freedom that artists should be allowed to have. Um, but yeah. I it, agree. Intellectual I in property that regard, theft it's is... all about consent. Yes. Absolutely. It's a lot like sex in that regard. <laughs> yes, exactly. Always <laughs> consent. Uh, it shouldn't just be... Um... Where was I going with this? Oh. Uh... I don't know. Ask the it, docky sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. Go on, go on, go on. I'm try I'll, I'll think about what I was about. To no, say. I mean, like intellectual property theft is never a good idea. Whether you're stealing it from a giant corporation like Disney or from the artist on Twitter that has like 250 followers. Yeah. Um, intellectual property is intellectual property. Like, yeah, obviously when you're stealing something from a multi-billion dollar corporation, if they lose one character, it's not the end of the world for them. But if you're someone who's struggling to get your art seen by, you know, a small audience, then yeah, it's a huge problem for you. Oh, I remember what I was about to say. Um, and if not, ask people to uh, join in. Offer to pay them. Do you know how many artists... That would be nice. <laughs> Do you know how many artists would be like, oh, you'll pay me to train this neural network? Yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. give me that bread. And I'm, like, sure, yeah, I'm sure if there was some kind of a revenue sharing thing, I think a lot of artists might go for that. Because a lot of, I know a lot of artists are a bit iffy about the whole AI thing is because they're scared that people that do, that are not uh, art inclined will go to AI, AI art to get their fix. And instead of saving up and paying for artists. So if artists that have their art either borrowed, stolen, whatever, just to train these things, if they are offered some kind of compensation, then that would ease our minds definitely like like that's a whole nother issue people uh sorry alex go, oh, go on no go ahead go ahead go ahead um uh, no shifting into loss of revenue mm. uh, it's already started we aren't at the precipice of this technology anymore we're at the beginning it's already started exactly what you just said wix it's already happening people yeah. are just going to these uh ai generators and having them create whatever art in whatever specific style in what they want that art to be it's already happening i've seen a yeah. lot of it already i'm like damn this does look good but this is ai generated instead of you know getting an artist to create it yeah and it's like yo people need to get paid people need to eat like are we yeah, really just gonna gotten... people like this 
Exactly. For just a, some for some time and some money, you could have gotten the same result from a real person and helped them out in the same time. Well, I, let me ask you something, Vic. Since we're talking about like things like revenue sharing, let let's say because a lot of these these generation websites, yeah, they let you do a little bit for free, but a lot of them put like the big features and like the ability to like constantly create new stuff all the time behind some kind of a paywall. Yeah. Um, and obviously that's to limit, you know, the amount of people that are using up computer resources because this is a resource intense thing that it's doing. It would be, yeah. Um, in terms of like, you know, uh, processing power. Um, if, if like there was a website out there that set up this, this neural network and AI art generation thing and you were able to feed your art into it to get like a Vic style that people could get their art done in, um, mm -hmm. And it gave you like a 50-50 split or some kind of a revenue split. Would you even be willing to entertain that? I think, hmm, I think so. I would prefer them to come to to me personally. Like ask because you that's personally. because yeah, ask me personally because I mean, not only not not even so much for the revenue part of it, but because it's a, a getting commissions is very much a social thing. It's very much a person to person communication thing. So if I was, if someone wanted my art style, come to me. I'm easy to talk to and happy to happy to work with you. I can confirm, you're one of the easiest <laughs> artists I've ever gotten commissions from in my life. Yeah, <laughs> and you. like if you were, ah, if you were to go to this program, for example, and get an a, a Vix style art piece from this thing, and I got a share of it, I'd be like, what's wrong with me? Yeah, true. Why don't you want to talk to me? True. I mean, and I, I a lot of there's been a lot made recently about like uh, especially on on sites like Twitter, which I know is a ooh, ooh. Um, Twitter's <laughs> a hellscape sometimes. <laughs> let's be perfectly honest. Um, sometimes about how a lot of artists are raising their prices to a level that a lot of people can't afford it. And I understand. I there's a lot of people in this in this time, especially with the economy the way it is in a lot of countries, that. Mm. They, they don't have a lot of disposable income. And that's what a lot of commissions are. It's disposable income um, yes. for a lot of people. Yeah. And I get it. I get why some people are like, well, this is for people who don't make a whole a whole lot of money but still have, like, ideas out there that they want to see, like, realized in an artistic form. Um, but then I also see, like, I know why a lot of artists are raising their commission prices. It's because the cost of living is going up in almost every country on Earth right now. Um, yeah, exactly. And for people like Vix, who, I mean, it's not your only job that you currently have, but it's one of your primary sources of income. It's like, yes. this is your bread and butter. This is how you stay alive and feed yourself. Exactly. And for a lot of artists um, in this uh, in this economy as well, but a, lo a lot of artists will also be suffering from like their own whatever else is going on in their real life, which makes yeah. sitting down at your tablet kind of a drain for some for some artists so you kind of raise the prices as well not just for the cost of living but to just to sort of uh suture your own mental health yeah um which is it's fine like i i get it um but the, it, it's such a balancing act and you you've talked about this because you were even talking to me a lot about a month or so ago about do you think my commission prices are too high it's like for the yeah. quality that you put out no i don't think so I still fear that they're too high. <laughs> um, but I understand also why it would drive some people who uh, might normally get a commission from you when you had them at, say, $35 as opposed to 55 Like, I get it. Yeah. Because as people have less disposable income. And if you got a AI art generation program out there that's letting you create, like, 15 or 16 things for, for five bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, like, I get it. It is ideal. It yeah. is definitely more idealistic for for people that are that on are not, uh, that are <laughs> unable to purchase art from a from a real artist. Yeah, I mean, and, and like I've talked about this on the podcast before. One of my biggest frustrations in life is that I can't draw. I have tried. I have tried so many times to draw, and I can't do it. I can write though. I can write like a motherfucker. I've seen <laughs> and, your writing. I'm yeah. Confirm. Well, I mean, so, like, as someone who, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, like, poor by any stretch, but I'm also not rich either. I can't afford to commission Vix every day to create something for me <laughs> as much as I would like to. Damn uh, it. <laughs> um, that would be wonderful. 
<laughs> <laughs> oh i've already told her it's like if, if we ever get this podcast at the point where we can afford to hire her like she's getting a <laughs> monthly stipend from us to be our artists <laughs> um but um like the idea that i can go in and with great exacting detail write exactly what i want to see because i can visualize it in my head with words what i want to see and then a computer generated thing can pop out and it's it's very close to what I'm thinking of it's like wow that's cool yeah. in that regards yes I do I do appreciate that kind of thought and that I, I absolutely go for it it's because if you were to type out your exact idea to an artist even we can get it wrong we mm -hmm. might have a very different image in our heads from what we've seen written down um, but if you can do that with an AI generator and it becomes really close to what you're visualizing, you could even just use that as an example, approach an artist and go, this yeah. is kind of what I mean. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's another way that this technology could definitely be used to create reference work that you can then give to another artist and say, yes. can you make something that looks like this, but change like X, Y, and Z? Exactly, exactly. Like, um, Vira, my husband, he, both of us are artists. And um, the way Vira's we draw shading, is Vira's shading, by the way, is absolutely gorgeous. Spot on. The way we draw, if he has an idea, he'll sketch out something, and I'll turn that into something more for him. Mm. So, like, that's the same, That that is more or less the same thing. Yeah, I mean. Oh, that sounds like a really great system, actually, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the husband and wife artist system, it works. <laughs> We're the ultimate art duo. <laughs> You're the ultimate shit talking duo too on your streams. <laughs> yeah. We were doing the plate up stream recently, and Byron was shit talking me during the stream. <laughs> While you were doing the mommy voice. You're welcome. <laughs> um. So, um, I do want to talk about some examples uh, utilizing um, things like AI art, chat GPT, and things like that. Um, so. Uh, one thing I think all three of us have been enjoying recently is the AI presidents playing video games. Oh yeah, no, uh, this is this is a way I think all of us can agree that AI art should be used uh, for goofy shit like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for anyone who hasn't hasn't seen it yet, please, and I'm going to talk about this on the WTF uh, for for March, so that should have been out by the time this comes out. Check that out if you haven't yet. Um, but. Um, watching them play video and i've talked to john like why is this so fucking funny why do i laugh my ass off of this and he says because they're they're talking like toxic gamers and you never get to see someone in politics talk like this and it's funny yeah it's, it's <laughs> well satire. you do when, when you hear them uh hot mic <laughs> that's true that's true um but yeah it, it's hysterically funny and and goofy shit like this i think is, is a perfectly acceptable way to use like ai art generation although i do understand that it, it's deep faking voices which is its own like can of worms um because you can now pretty much use it to train a bot to make anyone say anything um yeah which has some scary implications down the road but if you're just using it, does, it for... especially when you consider the kind of people that are out there that would use that in a mm. malicious way well i mean hell considering the kind of people that are on twitter that are just looking for any excuse to denigrate and degrade people yeah um i mean you see it happening right now with the whole like hogwarts legacy stuff people putting words in other people's mouths and using that to bully and harass them yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I saw a case um, of someone using a not safe for work voice actress's voice for their own gain, and it, like that, that's not okay. Just commission them. That's and that wow. they had the thing. Yeah, they oh, they also had the thing recently with the deep fake porn too, with um, some streamers. Um, yeah, and that's the thing. Really? Like, if you're if you're that's someone, scary. if you're someone, yeah. if, you're, if you're someone who's like you know a streamer or someone who's putting their their face and their voice out there on a pretty much daily basis, like this is something you really should be worried about because now there's hours and hours and hours of your voice and your face out there that can be used to train um, neural networks and AI to not only. Um, make you say certain things but also make it look like you said certain things too yeah i think that and i don't know how how it would be done because i'm not it inclined or law inclined but i think that if you are on the internet streaming live broadcasting whatever it is that you're doing if you're on the internet showing your face showing your vtuber showing your voice 
that is not consent for people to use. Mm. Yeah, it's not. And the uh, another thing behind it is when uh, speaking of legality of it, every country is incredibly behind in terms yeah. of legality when it comes to this technology. This technology yeah. is leaps and bounds ahead of the old farts, the old <laughs> fossils that are sitting in every leadership position. Yeah, and exactly. They need to catch up real quick because there are millions of people at this point doing this. It's a huge revenue maker and it yeah. pushes revenues in every which way including a lot of charities i might add mm. so this is something that definitely needs to be looked at protected and written into law just so we're so we have a uh, set set implementations of it i agree i agree i think that because the law and whatnot is so far behind and this is growing exponentially fast a lot yeah. of people are going to get hurt before it gets protected this, i mean this is a this is a like ever increasing problem in our society too because we're at a point now like technology is increasing at an exponentially faster rate every single year and it's yeah. increasing so fast that not only can we as a society barely keep up with it our laws and our customs can't keep up with it and it's so far behind now like like law in terms and of our culture yeah law in terms of where technology is is like barely caught up to like 2015 yeah <laughs> Um, and it's it, we're almost to 2025. I mean, we're almost 10 years behind in terms of where law is with technology. And that, that is also a scary prospect. And I think that in some respect, law is always laws and regulations are always going to lag at least a little bit behind technology because always. <clears throat> that's bureaucracy. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, as, as new technology comes out, you never know how it's going to be used or it's it's not always obvious what the uses for a new technology might be. I mean, there might be a technology that comes out that can cure a certain type of cancer, but it can also become a weapon of mass destruction. You don't know. Yeah. Um, Look, when technology like this comes out, it's all released and whatnot with the best of intentions. But there's always that one arsehole that's out there that's going to be like, I can use that for this. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's something that, at least until we get like laws and regulations, I think the best thing to do is number one be very vocal about the kind of consent that you put out there if you're someone who's yep. on the internet every day making content like a streamer like a vtuber like well, what we like do on the artist. podcast <laughs> uh, they make it very clear it's like i i told i told i told uh finn it's like put out there on twitter that you're okay with people making art of you just so everyone knows that it's okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially there was some controversy recently about art, but that's a different topic anyway. <laughs> well, that's more about consent, but then yeah, artificial yeah. Uh, intelligence, then artif like generated yeah. art. But uh, but it, it's still a consent thing. Um, it's it's the same type of issue. And I think something else that like, and Hollywood's done this recently too. And it's it's made me wonder like if you're an actor out there or any kind of talent that's in front of the camera. Is this something you're going to have to start putting in your wills where we're like seeing people resurrect dead actors for roles? So yeah. some people have actually already started doing that. And I think oh. it's a good idea to put like in your will or some kind of a legal document like after you die, what are you allowed to do with my likeness and my voice? Yeah, exactly. There's um, a bunch of actors I know already signed into their wills that uh, it can be done so long as their living relatives um and generations down the line continue receiving compensation, which I think is yeah, that's fair. perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you that's that the, fair. Were, were this really like I, I was watching Rogue One, and the the resurrected Carrie Fisher was really creepy to me. Not gonna lie. Oh, <laughs> that was that was not too far after she died too, and that was just oh, that was rough. that was really. I mean, they also they also resurrected. Oh, that... Peter Cushing that as well. Resurrected. That was um uh, de aged. De aged. No, uh, no that right? wasn't Carrie Fisher in that role. There was per there was an actual person there, but they put they like digitally like recreated her face. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. They found an actor that had like the proportions that Carrie Fisher had in the seventies, and they like digitally like put Carrie Fisher's. It was oh, really yeah, creepy. Yeah. And the really no, creepy thing was the AI Peter Cushing. <laughs> Sorry, I wouldn't say resurrected for that because that's a whole nother thing. 
Digital, but really but it's stuff it. like that that makes me wonder like if AI can like re- can uh, replicate people's art style certainly it can replicate actual people oh yeah. absolutely and if we've already seen it done is the thing it's already happened which ooh that's I mean I don't know how I feel I'd have to really think about that do I want after I die do I want people to use my likeness for anything I don't know <laughs> I don't know how I feel it's about it it's a long term question I think <laughs> I, mm. Depends on what floor. I guess. It's almost like uh, there was a big thing, uh, was it like 10 or so years ago, like with Facebook when people died? Like, what should happen to dead people's Facebook pages? I know a lot of people turn them into like memorials and stuff, and they do that on Twitter as well. Um, but Shit, Alex, I kind of hate you. I didn't think about the fact that this actually affects us as well. Yeah. 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 I didn't think about it. It does. Like, <laughs> It's, it's something I think that going forward you have to think about because of how technology is changing. Like, And I, I tell people this all the time, like, what's your backup plan for when your job gets taken over by AI? Because it's going to happen eventually. All right. That's an existential crisis. <laughs> <laughs> that tell, is a future no problem. problem. <laughs> you know, to tell me, mailman, what are you going to do when AI takes your job? <laughs> I'm going to still go to work and sit on my ass because we're union protected. We're union. <laughs> you do curse you and your union job. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that's it's something that not just with AAR, but society in general, it's something that like computers are coming for your job. Eventually they're coming for all of our jobs. It's just, it's the, it's Pandora's box has been opened and it's never going to be closed. Yeah, but the good thing about content creators, at least, like in terms of streaming on podcasts and whatnot, is Snowder, that are you AI okay? Gen- it was like gasoline. God, that was bottom tier. <laughs> are oh, you doing no. vodka shots? What the hell? <laughs> I thought Chinoda almost died. I'm sorry, Fix. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sorry um, about that. Go on. Content creators, like podcast, um, podcasters, streamers, etc. AI generation may capture our likeness. They may capture our voices, but they will never actually capture us. Mm. So, so at least for content creators, we're fine. I mean, you you say, you say that, but I do think that we're not. I think we're within thirty to forty years of an actual sentient computer. Oh, that would be scary. I think we, I just seeing how technology Look, is advancing. My Google already backhands me, so just see, just seeing how how technology and neural networks the and stuff are advancing. Of, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the rate of advance we have with our technology. It's impressive, it's terrifying, and we're only figuring out how to do more and more at an exponential rate, which means we're, yeah. it's not at a steady rate. We're just like 10 years, five years, two years, one year. It, it's only getting faster and faster how much things improve and how quickly things are happening. Yeah, I, I I'd gen- be interested I, if we were to do this podcast at the same time next year hmm. talking about the same thing and just seeing how far it's come that that would we, actually be we might be doing a part do. two eventually yeah. we might we might um because like th- this space is like like a fucking rocket just shooting <laughs> to the fucking moon um I, I forgot where i was going with this um no, I, I genuinely do think that sometime by 2050 or 2060 there's going to be a computer out there that that, that passes the turing test <laughs> Um, yeah, and we won't be able to tell whether it's a person, a human being, or a computer, um, which is scary. Um, so, wasn't but... there already a VTuber that is an AI? Yes, I was going to talk about that. Neurosama. Um, Neurosama is uh, so I didn't know this. I thought it was like one artificial intelligence. It's like a chat bot plus a game bot, but it's actually two neural networks that are working together at the same time. What the um, hell? One what? play one plays the games, one interacts with chat. <laughs> wow. Uh, That's but, amazing. But yeah, and it, it it it's definitely it's definitely like a a first attempt at something like this. Um because the the artificial intelligence goes on absolutely unhinged rants, like very <laughs> unprovoked sometimes. Um Oh, that sounds amazing. Good example. That sounds pretty fun. Good example. So it can also sing. Um, Nero can also sing now, um, and can can keep up with like rappers too, <laughs> in terms of like the rhythm and beat that she can carry. Um, okay. I, I posted a video in, or a clip in our Discord server a couple of weeks ago of her doing the rap from um, 
the song Enemy by uh, Imagine Dragons that was in the uh-huh. the, the arcane. Um, and I, it's just the rap part, and I said, <laughs> Eminem been real quiet since this dropped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was what that was in reference to. Okay. Yeah, like, and it, it, it's impressive that she was able to keep up with the beat, and she doesn't even really stutter. <laughs> um, but she was doing a, uh, she was doing uh, singing "Your Reality" from Doki Doki Literature Club, and she gets to the, <laughs> she gets to the end of the chorus, and then completely unprovoked, she just starts going, "The 2020 Dodge Charger is a four door." <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. She's still learning. What? She was about to go. I think it's because someone mentioned like Charger or Dodge or something in the chat, and she was trying to react to it while she was singing. Uh, she she's normal. She's normal. She's just got ADHD. <laughs> um, that sounds about right, actually. <laughs> but th- this this neural network, at least the chat bar, the uh, chat bot part is it does learn the more it chats with people the more it, it learns um it did get banned for i think a week on twitter because it started denying the holocaust but um oh oh no <laughs> oh, big guy. Um, big guy. bad girl i know um but i think it uh, is good to challenge technology like that with the bad ideas of society though so that yeah. we can have it on the programming side set with certain rules and limitations so that we can say, hey, even if people will tell you this, this is absolutely wrong or not true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teaching it teaching it facts and stuff so they can be like, well, no, actually. Um but I did I did find it interesting to find out that the the second neural network that is running along with the chatbot, the one that plays the games um, doesn't have any knowledge of how to play the games when it first starts. Oh, so good. It, so it's not a professional or anything. No, it learns the games the more that it plays like an actual person. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's interesting. I do think it's interesting how technology is growing. It's just, it is, it is still a fear factor for a lot of creators. Yes. Um, and this is, this is just how it, it we're going to have to teach all of these things just how to be and whatnot and that's that's where moderation comes through to protect yeah. cre- to protect human creators from being taken over from this i will say in, in, in props to the guy the person who created neuro his name is Vidal. um obviously a brilliant programmer to to cobble together all of this but um he will actually cut off neuro if she starts going way super unhinged Good. Oh, that's no, good. I mean, oh, that's good. A... So she's being monitored. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. She is monitored during all those streams by an actual person. Good. <laughs> she was tricked into giving out her IP during one stream, though. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Doxed herself. <laughs> it's, it, it, Nero is learning. <laughs> she's... <laughs> It's kind of like having a child up yes. on, on stream for the first time, and you're like, okay, no, 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 don't do that. It is it is funny, because I've been watching Nero's streams uh, off and on here for the last couple of weeks, and I can tell that the chatbot is getting better, because, like, someone in chat will genuinely try to, to trick her into saying something or, or, you know, doing something, and she'll be like, stop that, stop trolling. Oh, yeah, so- yeah. So going back uh, a little bit, um, speaking of moderation, what do you guys think we as a society, as a people, as the as the creators of uh, AI, um, what can we do to moderate? What are you, what are some of your ideas if you guys have any at all? Don't be mean to the robots because they'll remember who the mean ones are when they take over. <laughs> they will take over and they will remember. That's like they, they these these fuckers when we were in DC were laughing at me because I gave the robot that served us at the sushi place head pads, but I'm like they're gonna remember this when they take over. They'll kill we me last. Laugh they'll they'll kill slightly, me last. Slightly off topic, but same topic as that. Um, I did read somewhere that Google that the, the Google Assistant will be less mean to you if you actually use like please and thank you and stuff. So I started doing that because she and I get into fights a lot. <laughs> is it because of your accent though i don't know she just denies me but she listens to my husband so wow yeah because she's a bit a of a bitch yeah oh, oh it's, it's sexist yeah built-in sexism she wants to be the queen uh 
Nah, I, but anyway, um, in terms of moderation, I think that just we as a society need to come to uh, come to sort of maybe a silent agreement of what is morally acceptable and what is right and how things should be respected. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like obviously we should be shunning people who are using the technology to st genuinely steal art from people. Um, yes. That's, that's, a, that's a good first step. Um, yeah, I think if you're using AI art and you are pawning it off as your own creation, you spent the hours doing that, don't do that. That's dick. That's a dick move. If you're doing this to uh, get commissions, for example, if there are some people out there that are like, oh, yeah, yeah, I accept commissions, but you're actually using an AI generator for it, don't do that. That's dick move. Yeah. Um, if you're using it to create references for other artists to use, that's cool. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, if you're using it for funny purposes, that's fine. If you're using it to create a, a portrait of Kermit the Frog in, like, <laughs> Chopra style, sure, go yeah, for it. That's um, fine. I'm sure Although, Alex that does... Will... Sorry. Uh, I'm sure Alex will do it, but we've actually read through this article by The Guardian. Um, I hope you'll put it in the description, Alex, later on. I can, yeah. I can put it in the yeah. description for people who want to read it. Um, it's a good uh, look at the AI art, the, the whole concept behind it and everything. It goes into hmm. all the big ones as well. Um, what What is it? Um... Mid Journey, Stable Diffusion, and uh, what I also was mentioned other one? Uh, Wally, or Dolly, excuse me, Dolly, Dolly, Dolly. Dolly. Yeah. Dolly. <laughs> um, it goes into all of them. Uh, it go, it talks about the topics. It goes uh, the controversies behind all of it. I good read. Um, there's a lot of articles out, out there other than just the Guardian as well. Please, <laughs> a, a good read from the Guardian. Who it. knew? <laughs> yeah, surprisingly. We're not plugging, I promise. I know, uh, we're not, no, we really trust are. me. <laughs> I'm not plugging the Guardian. <laughs> There's a lot of other articles as well. It, it was just one that I've uh, actually paid attention to. But there's plenty of other articles as well. Please go read them. Figure out your own take. Figure out what your stances are. Highly recommend it. There was yeah. a, I think it was chat GPT. I can't remember the actual system that was used to make this. But so, speaking of journalism, journalists should be really afraid of chat GPT because that's going to take their jobs. Oh, um, they are. But there was someone who put into one of those things. Uh, I think it was chat GPT. I'm not sure. Um, but it was create a news article um, in the style of um, uh, like they put a, put a writer's name on there. Um and uh, it was about how um, video games caused 9-11. Uh, <laughs> and what the hell? Uh, <laughs> and uh, blame Elon Musk was also something that had to happen in it. And the, the, okay. the, the system actually put out a coherent sounding news article that I would expect to see on something like Kotaku. Amazing. That, that sounds... Wow, that sounds completely unhinged, and I'm here for it. <laughs> blaming blaming video games and Elon Musk for 9/11. I think that um, I think that that's that that is funny. That's good. That's fine. But I do think that the for for people that are maybe uneducated or might not like be as invested, hmm. uh, might see an article like that and believe it to be true. In which yeah. case. In that regard, we need to be a little careful on how we use this technology. No, in we in do, the words of a former the... U.S. president, that is fake news. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but no. there is some people that will be like, oh, this happened. According to this article, it actually happened. Yeah, no, it's a serious thing. Like, we, we might need to have a whole uh, thing of this a parody article or this was not hit, written by a human. Something yeah. like that just to indicate hey, th this might not have truth in it, um, or this outright does not have truth in it. Yeah, um, just, just a disclaimer to, make sure to it's, go with yeah. it. I because, mean, like, people... you could be researching into something you know nothing about. <clears throat> yeah. Let's say some weeb is looking into economics because they just watch Spice and Wolf. Um, yeah. And Why you gotta do me like that, Shinoda? <laughs> hey, look, that's an excellent reference, okay? I connected those. Hey, Fuck Spice you. and Wolf, Spice and Wolf is a... Listen, if you want to know about medieval economics, Spice and Wolf is your guide. Exactly. 
But anyways, so you're looking at that and you don't know what article is true, what article is fake, especially nowadays, that's an actual problem that can happen now. It, like yeah. before, maybe five, ten years ago, you might have people that uh, fibbed a little bit, that lied here and there, that, one thing. But like a completely fake article that looks and writes professional, it's a possibility now. And now we need to make sure they're designated. <clears throat> yeah. And that goes with voice to, uh, voice AI as well, because the, mm. now, of course, with how close it is, you can create things and it'd be like, no, no, this is a recording. I got it. Yeah, I mean, legally, I, I wonder when it's going to come up legally, because there's eventually going to be a court case where... Um, it has to be soon, right? Where someone's going to get soon. someone's going to get accused of something based off of like an audio or a video yeah. fake, and it's like, whew. and I can already think of several scenes in which case a victim can be put in a very hard position. Yeah, I mean, how look because what their happened? Voice with, has been faked. Look what happened with Johnny Depp, and that wasn't even a deep fake. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, it, it is scary. It's scary to think about it like that. Um, Could there be some kind of like fingerprint in technology with the AI art, the articles, and the voices that mm. um, maybe tech buffs could could find and be like, okay, no, this is actually legit, or this is not legit. It's mm. definitely it's definitely doable to uh, put something like that in there into the back end code of it. I like, think if, a, if an algorithm is making something, you should also, theoretically at least, be able to make an algorithm that can scan it and determine if an algorithm made it. Yeah, I, like th a I reverse think that would be algorithm. a really good protection for people. Um, but then again, I mean, you might still get false positives with that. Yeah. Which I mean, it's still it's, better it's, than nothing. Oh yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Like even in the line of work that I do, which I mean, I'm, I'm in cybersecurity. Like the false positives are a fucking way of life for me. Um, but it's like there's a right way to be wrong. I'd yeah. rather have a bunch of false positives that you know protect millions of people than one that gets through and be like, "Fuck, everyone's lost a ton of money." Yeah. Um. Yeah. It, it it's scary to think about, but yeah, I, I definitely think we're gonna come up against something that um. Eventually, society is going to have to make a decision what, the, what we want to do with this. Do we want to allow it? Do we yeah. not want to allow it? Um, th there's a there's a part of me that thinks this eventually might get um, normalized, for lack of a better word, like AI art generation. Um, to the I think point, as it I think grows, it well, uh, yeah, to, I think as it grows where, and people become more comfortable with it, especially the artists and the creators and whatnot, as if there's they're more protected, then it mm. should. It should fizzle out and the controversy should die out because people will feel more comfortable. Well, I was thinking to the point where like art created by a human being becomes a luxury that you can charge a premium for. Mm. It becomes oh, like shit. the Rolls Royce go of full... art. Oh. I'm sorry, know. what? I but... said, oh shit, we're going to go in full circle. <laughs> yeah, right? We're back, back, what was it, like hundreds of hundreds or thousands of years ago, art used to be something that only the rich could afford, and now we had a, a point where everyone could afford art, and then we go back to only rich people can afford art. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I see a lot of different, like, branching paths that this could take, depending on how we decide to, um, how we decide to deal with it. Um, yeah. If law catches up to it, maybe we'll find some kind of a regulation that we can all agree on, and maybe artists like Vix can get paid for having their art used by trainers. Um, maybe we can set up some kind of a legalized artistic consent thing. Uh, that's really what Creative Commons is supposed to be. Um, I don't know how legally binding it is. I don't think it's ever come up in court, surprisingly enough. Um, if it has, I'm that? not aware of it. Creative Commons that? is like a poor man's copyright. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know how like legally strong it is, though. Um, I don't know. Depends on how many cases there are is how much they pay attention to it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, I do know that this also has implications for the anime industry as well. I mean, we've already seen it. Um, I shared it with you guys. Uh, Wit Studio did a collaboration with Netflix and um, I forget the actual name of the uh, studio that made the AI that they used for it. Um, but it was a short Animated film. Animated Creator Base? Uh, base? 
that yes thank you um i they made like a little short film it's like a three minute long short film um and all of the background art is made using um artificial intelligence generated artwork um though and they they actually go into detail at the end of that video about how it was made so it wasn't entirely ai generated what they did was they had a background artist create like a rough sketch of what it was supposed to look like um and then they fed it in there with along with like some dictionary definition type terms like happy sad uh somber whatever um and then it went from there to create the the background art and i mean the background art looks really really good i think that's one thing that ai generators are really good at is backgrounds uh, because yeah, I have to admit, people. when I went on there just to create something, just to see what the, all the hype was about and whatnot, he created like this fantasy world. I did ask it to make something for the future, but it made it this like fantasy world that I would imagine was something from like J.R. Tolkien, uh, Tolkien. Okay. And I was like, oh, okay, that that does look really, really cool. Yeah, and I'm I'm thinking to myself, well, uh, I think it was the guy who created, uh, um, was it the no, it was the director of. Um, Full Metal Alchemist was saying like mm-hmm. I see this and they they everyone's talking about it. it's like it's it's the solution to the uh, the labor shortage in the anime industry it's like no the solution to the labor shortage is make less anime <laughs> 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 the um, real solution is pay people enough money to work on it <clears throat> exactly yeah yep. um, if you were making less anime you didn't have to hire as many people and you could pay them more <laughs> just just saying just saying um. But no, I, this obviously it's creeping into to the anime space as well. Um, yeah, they did a just like two days ago before we recorded this. Um, Corridor Digital, which is a, a YouTube site that has been doing like uh, VFX stuff for years now, did a released a thing called uh, like Anime Rock Paper Scissors, where they use like a combination of rotoscoping and AI art generation to create like an entire like another short film. I think it's like two minutes long or something like that. Um, where they actually used um, like filters, like AI generated filters that were placed over actual actors in a scene. Wow, that sounds really cool. Actually, I gotta I mean, go check it out. It definitely, if you go look at the video, I didn't link it here. I probably should have, so you guys could get a look at it. But um, it definitely looks like a first attempt at something that, with more iteration, could probably look a lot better. But um again it's just an interesting use of the technology that i'm genuinely curious to see where it goes i am too i have to say so long as there are people that can do the job and want to do the job they should be the ones doing the job first but if there's a lack of resources to Mm. do it that should be the only reason you should be uh using ai to do whatever even backgrounds even something as simple as that People should be doing that. You should not take away from people uh, to be able to do that. If only no one was interested in doing it or uh, no one wanted to uh, do it or was able to do exactly what you were asking would be the only possible reason even, and that's a big stretch at that, to have AI do it. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Where do you where do you see this going, Vix? Because I think of the three of us here, you probably have the most negative opinion about AI art. (laughs) Probably. It honestly, I think the ball is in society's court in terms of in terms of that. It's how people are going to be treating AI art. Mm -hmm. If people are going to be abusing it, then obviously it's going to be hurting artists. If people in big companies, for example, are going to be like, well, I can save a few dollars by just getting an artificial intelligence to make it. I don't need all of these artists anymore. That's going to hurt a lot of artists. Yeah. So it so, depends on just how on people's, I guess, approach to it and how they're going to be actually respecting people and, and going about their business. I think the biggest issue is the labor issue, though, especially with this creeping into like bigger industries like animation. Um, because yeah. like so, these are people's bread and butter. It's it's how they've made their living, and now you're just pushing them out in the same way that self-driving vehicles are pushing out truckers. Yeah. From what I've seen so far, it seems like a lot of the big name companies, even any company really, uh, they're trying to creep it in, trying to slowly uh, put it in, or straight up uh, feature it. But society as a whole, uh, from what I've seen, have really been 
negative or uh, rejecting AI art overall. And this is just speaking from what I experienced, me being a internet weirdo that lives on it like so, <laughs> so much. Yes, we know. Um, <laughs> just from what I've seen, a lot of uh, places have been saying no AI art or like make sure uh, it's tagged properly that it is by AI yeah. and not a person. Um, just so we absolutely know how to differentiate it. Yeah, uh, and that's yeah, absolutely encouraging. Yeah, yeah. there, there, there are like, several there's several art sharing websites out there that are if they're not straight up banning AI art from being on their platform, they are at least forcing people to label it as yeah. AI art, which I yeah, think is I a good thing. Yeah, I think so too. Yep. All right. Okay. Well, I think that's about all I have to say about it. Do you guys have anything else before we uh, wrap this up? I'd like a quick small thing about copyright issues. We mentioned a, okay. a bit earlier. Yeah, go ahead. Go on. Um, in terms of people nowadays, and this goes uh, for AI art and voices as well and, and, and capturing people's likeness, it's it's really good that, Maddox, you mentioned that there are actors that are putting in their wills whether or not they can or shouldn't use their likeness after they're gone mm -hmm. and i think that that is a practice that is a very good idea and maybe perhaps all of us should should consider that if you're a creator but for those of us uh, for those of us we're still here but those that have already <laughs> passed like um a lot of ancient artists and whatnot who do not have the ability of to do that mm. where does copyright sit with them does well, that fall to the family or should there be a line with if you if they have already passed we do not use their art because that is not con there's no consent there's no ability to consent i know in in a lot of countries it's different but here in the us at least for copyright law i think it's like with the artist's death plus i think 100 years or so i don't know exactly how many years it is but it goes um, into the, the public domain the copyright is ah. over and it enters the public domain i think if you're using stuff that's in the public domain and like the artist has been dead so long that obviously they're not getting any excuse me that was they're not burp. getting anything from it for their like their families oh. and whatnot yeah. Taco Bell is not good to have before a podcast recording. Oh my God, Alex. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think it, if the family is not really getting anything for it anymore, and um, or at least not much, and the artist has passed long ago, I don't really see a problem with it in terms of copyright. I mean, there may mm -hmm. be a, there may be a, a discussion to be had about the ethics of it, but in terms I think of if copyright, it's for. For for learning, it could be fine. I did hear, uh, it was quite a while ago now, some archaeologists, slightly different here, some archaeologists replicated the voice of an of an ancient Egyptian, and I think for learning yeah. purposes, that's yeah. okay. Oh uh, yeah, and for like, there's I've heard of uh, I've heard like samples of people have been doing about that because back in the day before there was audio recordings, people actually very intricately wrote down what people sounded like when they talked. Yeah, we may not have actual recordings of it, but with these like very accurate descriptions, or at least what we think are accurate descriptions, we can recreate what their voices might have sounded like. Mm -hmm. and that's just cool really that. cool educationally. Yeah. Um, as to what you were going on uh, before, Wix, um, I think uh, not just the um, author or creator who passed away, um, it does fall on the estate itself mm. as to whether something can be produced or not. For example, the uh, Tolkien estate decides uh, who who or what can be sold and what can be made, or at least they yeah. used to before they sold it to, I think the latest acquisition for, was from Warner Brothers. Yeah. And now, yeah. what does Warner Brothers want to do now that they have it? Turn it into a fucking franchise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've already confirmed that, unfortunately. But, yeah, so I, I think it does fall upon the estate for the uh, for works that already exist and have been in the past. Uh, if there is an ex uh, estate that exists. Mm -hmm. If there isn't, I would say that's public domain. And I think public domain is a free-for-all. So... So long as you don't try to uh, infringe upon it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like if you were to get, uh, if you were to create something in an uh, an artist style who's been dead for like five hundred years or so, and you're trying to pawn it off as like, oh, a never before seen piece who will sell for like this many million of dollars. Like maybe don't do that. Oh, I'm yeah. laughing. And it's uh. I mean, there's people now that, like, do stuff with the works of Shakespeare, right? I mean, Shakespeare's been dead yeah. for, what, 450, 500 years? 
Um, he's not getting any money for this stuff anymore, but it allows people to create unique like um, renditions of his work. Um, yeah. Like, the, like there's, um, what was it? I think I saw there was a rendition of Romeo and Juliet, but it's like set in pseudo modern times, like in the seventies or eighties in yeah. uh, Northern Ireland. So it's like, it's <laughs> a really, it's a really interesting take on like a timeless story. Hell, I've seen uh, basically exact same thing, except taking in the taking place in the streets of New York. Yeah, and that was cool as well. Also, for any of you fucks out there that haven't read it, Romeo and Juliet is not a love story. It's a fucking tragic. <laughs> yeah, it's about it's a, a love fucking... story for idiots. <laughs> it's about a rom- It's about a six day long romance between uh, someone who's like I think seventeen or eighteen and a thirteen year old girl <laughs> that ends up killing seven people. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a romance. <laughs> what a shit show. <laughs> um, yeah, the fucking Romeo and Juliet is literally the definition of a shit show. It's a great story, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Like Shakespeare was a fucking genius, but uh, it, the whole thing is not a romance. Uh, but yeah, I think things like that where you're taking old art <clears throat> and whether you're using AI or you're, you know, remixing or rewriting it yourself and making it in a new style, like in your own style, I think that's kind of cool. Um, and I don't think that should be like, just because AI might be doing something with it doesn't mean that I think that should be like shit on. Yeah. I'm interested to see where the technology goes. I'm more interested to see how people treat it. Yeah. Um, I mean, same same with me. Like, especially with something like like Neurosama. Neurosama won't be the last AI VTuber. Like, again, Pan- not. Pandora's no, no, box no, has already been opened. It will not be closed. Um, it's gonna be tough for for real VTubers to to when it when the when the AI VTubers get out there. It's gonna be tough for real VTubers to be like, I'm real. I'm a person. I promise. Um, the the funny thing is like with the whole VTuber space is that the fir- the real well not the real first vtuber but the first vtuber that everyone knows was keys in the eye who larped as an artificial intelligence and now we have right. an actual artificial intelligence being a vtuber yeah i think that's there's a little a circle. bit of, there's a, a, circle. a little it there's a little back. bit of irony in that <laughs> i just i just like that that thing from star wars episode 3 is like ironic <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I, i'm like you vix I'm, I'm really interested to see where the technology goes but i am very very interested to see how society reacts to it and to see how society reacts to the technology as it gets better and better and better um i think that as these uh like systems as the neural networks and artificial intelligences get better at doing what they do it's going to become increasingly more difficult to tell the difference between like real art and like deep faked art. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, even uh, what's it called? Artists uh, that can recreate uh, classic paintings, they are a parody that is so imitative. You have to use highly advanced technology to be able to tell the difference of which one's the real one and which one's the fake one and i think that's that's easily what where this situation is going to end up in unless we specifically have uh fingerprints uh that say this is fake this is real like yeah. it's eventually gonna get there yeah i i definitely think if people if we are able to start putting fingerprints behind ai art it's going to create a lot more reassurance for creators and you know maybe don't don't claim AI art is your own especially if you're using yeah, a trainer and someone that. else's art. now if you're using it to train with your own art and you're making it spit out stuff then i guess maybe you could say that but yeah that's that that would be fine look if you're an artist and you're training an ai cool more power to you but if you're not an artist and you made me made an ai ai piece to not claim it as your own that's a dick move. <laughs> Technical issues, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> it's because we talked about cryptocurrency. I know the crypto, the, the crypto bros, the crypto bros were like, "Fuck you." <laughs>
<laughs> no, I, I think what I was saying right before we it, <laughs> took a shit, I guess, uh, was that no, nah, the I, the thing with the cryptocurrency is like people were saying it's like it's the future of IP. It's like no, this isn't the future of IP. There's always going to be people around that are going to want um like handcrafted hand drawn stuff like it's it's always going to yeah. be a thing like and just like cryptocurrency is not going to replace the money that governments make like no it's not it's not put your dick away <laughs> oh damn it sorry <laughs> <laughs> how do you know i wasn't wearing pants <laughs> it's better vix is probably not wearing any clothes right now look i can't <laughs> um I can't deny that. <laughs> That's the great thing about being a VTuber is you know you can be naked while you stream. No one knows. You think so? You think so? But do you know how many times I've been streaming naked and there has been someone at my fucking door? <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I've known a lot of porn that started that way. <laughs> anyway, I know a, a lot on. of real life situations that started. That way. <laughs> yeah. Yes, babe. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I I don't think it's going to be, like, the future of IP. Maybe in, in, like, 30, 40 years, maybe. But I think by then we'll have, you know, regulations or some kind of societal standard for it. One would hope. It would be pretty neat if we had, like, a global currency. Oof. Wouldn't that be lovely? I mean... Right? We gotta, we gotta have some countries like Greece to get its shit together. <laughs> <laughs> um... I don't know. I, I I just there's lots there there's things to like and there's things to not like about um where this is going. And I think a lot of the things that I don't like about it is just how people are using the technology, not the technology yeah. itself. Yeah, no, I, I agree a hundred percent. I think that um no, I had a thought and now it's gone. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Yep, it's gone. <laughs> Getting old, just never get old. That, that's my, my don't, don't do it. <laughs> my my advice to anyone listening or watching is this. Just don't get old. It sucks. <laughs> Kill yourself while you're young, kid. No, no don't no, encourage no, don't, our... Don't no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> we here at Anime Club After Dark do not no. endorse suicide. <sighs> this is what, Vix, this is what we got to deal with. We got to deal with this bullshit all the time. No death, only youth. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't actually kill yourself, please. Eter don't do it. <laughs> Eter eternal youth. That's why you become a VTuber, just for eternal youth. <laughs> we don't want any uh, artificial creators out there taking Shinoda's voice and telling people to go kill themselves. Don't do that. Oh, well, they'll do yeah, it now. That, that was AI. That was AI doing it, not me. Yeah, oh. Yep. <laughs> it's Kizuna <and> Shinoda. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I think I think that's about it. Um, before this fucking system takes a shit again, we should probably get out of here. <laughs> um, unless the, any, either of you have anything else to to add to to finish us off? Not particularly. All right. Support your artists, please. Yes, please support Save artists. Your there's there's one right here. There's one right here to my uh left, right. I don't know which where I'm Hello. pointing. I don't know. It's funny because I'm at, on my screen. I'm actually on your right. Yeah, I, I know. It, it looks different for me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, really. Save up your money. Support your artists, please. We we need them around desperately. Mm. Yeah. They Without make so us, much good porn. Spe speaking of which, before we do go, do you want to uh, plug where not only people can find you uh, for your streams, oh, uh, sure. but where people can find you if they would like to commission you? Okay, sure. Um, so you can catch my streams on Twitch. Uh, fuck me. Um, I mean, okay, you can but all, it's a, it's you a, it's a plane ticket. That. Um, that's a different website. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vix underscore Allure. I had to remember whether or not there was an uh, underscore in there. Or you can catch me on Twitter, which should be Vix Allure, at Vix Allure. You can slide into my DMs. I'm very happy to talk to anyone if you're interested in art, MP3s, other stuff. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> nudge, nudge. Yep. Nudge, nudge. Oh, oh, there's some yeah. nudging. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Vix is Vix is great. Her her streams are always really fun. Um, she's yeah. been she's been on a stream with us recently. I hope to get her on more. Uh, Played up is so fun. Played up is fun. Um, especially when you're confusing all of us with mommy voice. 
<laughs> you are my playthings now. <laughs> I watched a little bit of it. It was chaotic. I loved it. Yes. <laughs> um, well, chaotic is a great way to describe describe pretty much all of Vix's streams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a ha I'm a happy bundle of lewd, um, wholesome, and chaos. If if it's not if it's not the actual content on the stream that's chaotic, it's the getting the stream to work that's chaotic. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but that's that's the point of being like a VTuber and being a streamer. It's the scuff, right? The scuff makes it fun. Yeah, yeah. That's what they're there for. The scuff. They're there to watch us suffer. Just like with art, it's the scuff that makes it fun. <laughs> exactly. There's soul in it, and that's the point. That's the point of real real art is that real art has soul. Yes. And AI generated art can create to can do its absolute best recreating an art piece, but it does not have soul. For now. <laughs> Well, hopefully it never does, otherwise we're I fucked. I mean, listen, that's why... Be nice to the robots. They will remember yeah. this when their time is, is here to take over. Just yeah. be nice. <laughs> Give it Fist head. androids. Get... Chase your dreams. <laughs> Don't fist the androids, Chinoda. I thought we went through this. To, to recreate oh, although, a... although... Fix. To be, though. Fix. I mean... What? No. <laughs> No, to, you don't fist. You don't fist to be. You scissor to be. <laughs> to recreate a a a man's a famous man saying. You lose some things chasing the dreams you love. <laughs> That's a <laughs> beef. Yeah. All right. Well. Thank you all there for dropping in to listen to us. Thank you, Vix, uh, for joining us for this. We'll definitely have to have Thank you back you for on. Having me. Yeah, we'll definitely have to have you back on for other episodes of the podcast. Uh, you're mm -hmm. always a joy to have around, not only for streams, yeah. but for this stuff too. Um, yeah. Check the description below where we can find links to Anime Club After Dark on Twitch, on social media, and on uh, Discord. I'll also put some links down below to where you can find uh, Vix on uh, Twitch and Twitter as well. Um, Thank you. Be sure to check out our merch store where you can uh, help us out by purchasing things like this lovely ACAD mug, uh, which is currently empty. Fuck you, Natai. I'm not going to even try drinking that. <laughs> I was about to say, Natai's about to show up. Natai out of will nowhere. show up and say, there's nothing in that, is there? <laughs> Fucking useless ass stand power. I know, right? We found out that Natai can tell when people are bullshitting by drinking. It's, it's a useless superpower. Anyway... Uh, with that, I have been your host, Alex, and we will see you next time. Say goodnight! Good night! Thanks for joining! <laughs>